This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today I'm going to show you an absolutely insane tech jump you can make using stuff from the Mistlands. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the Mortar and Pestle. If you take a look here in the build menu, you can see that the Mortar and Pestle takes eight black marble, six fine wood, four core wood, and a workbench. Now, you may think that you are going to be unable to get this until you can actually farm black marble from the Mistlands using a black metal pick. However, that is not the case, and you can actually get one of these relatively early, as early as the Bronze Age. Now, why is this important? If you take a look here, your first upgrade for your cauldron is when you get over to the swamp, so technically the Iron Age. Now, you can kind of skirt the edges of the swamp early on and maybe get lucky and find some turnips, but you're much better off if you're fully equipped and ready to go in there and start exploring. Then your next upgrade is when you get to the mountains because you need silver, and then your upgrade after that is once you hit the plains biome and you are farming black metal. However, once you have the ability to sail to the Mistlands, and you will need to sail to the Mistlands, and I'll explain why here in a second, you can get black marble relatively easily. You will need to sail to the Mistlands. As you can see, all of the purple here is Mistlands biome. So the way the new map generation works is you have a lot of meadows and dark forests towards the center of the map, then out a little further from that, you have a ring of swamp, and then you move out from that, and you have Mistlands, and then at the top and the bottom, you have the ice biome and the fire biome. Now, if you have not generated a new map, what are you doing? Go generate a new map. Your Mistlands could be anywhere. Who knows? Uh, it's old generation, and you're messing with old generation and if you're playing in the Mistlands, you should definitely generate a new map. Not saying you need to use a new character, but you should definitely generate a new map. So once you have the ability to sail out to the Mistlands, one of the things you want to do is look for runes like you see here. You can see there's some there and some there, and I'm going to show you another example here of what you can find. There are also runes that can show up on little islands like you see here that look like this. They're just tiny little blocks with little faces on them. Some of them won't even have faces. They'll just be stacked blocks like you see here. These go down much deeper than what you expect. In most cases, if I dig down a little bit, you can see that this goes down into the ground. Now, one way you can get these is you can actually keep digging down until you dig underneath of them. However, you don't need to do that. You can actually attack these and destroy them. And you can attack them with pretty much whatever you want. I'm going to show you an example using just the basic antler pickaxe. So even if you have not even made a bronze pickaxe or anything else, you can see here, I can attack these and deal damage to them. And once you break them, you will get a piece of black marble. They will take a little while to break if you're just going to attack them and break them. You can see this one here is almost done. And if I continue to smash it and break it, I should get a piece of black marble. Now note that it's not 100% guaranteed, but you can get marble from it. So you can see there, I got a single piece of black marble. In order to make the mortar and pestle, you only need to break eight of these, which is relatively easy to do. Now, two other ways you can go about damaging these to get marble from them relatively quickly is you can use a hammer. You can use something as basic as a stag breaker. If you take a look as I smash, I'm smashing and hitting a bunch of them at one time. I can do this for a few minutes, break them all, and get all the marble that I'm going to need in one go. If you are at the Iron Age and you have a stone cutter's workbench, you can place one down near any of these and one, repair them, or two, just break them and collect the marble that way. It gives you an edge because it allows you to craft food that's higher than the level of the biome you should be in. Normally, when you are going into the mountain biome, for example, you should only be going in with food that you can make with the spice rack, which would be a level two cauldron. However, if you do this first and get the mortar and pestle, that will allow you to have a level three cauldron and be making level three foods. This can also 
also allow you to be making foods such as the sausages if, for example, you are unable to find turnips because just building this mortar and pestle will give you a tier two cauldron allowing you to make sausages. However, that is not all. It is also easy to get a hold of the mist hairs and the mist hair meat as you see here, which once you have cooked it will give you a total of 60 health and 20 stamina for a duration of 20 minutes. However, you will need to be in the Iron Age in order to get these because the mist hair meat can only be cooked on the iron cooking station as you see here. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, well, I can't go into the mist lands. I can't see anything in the mist lands. It's going to be super dangerous and I'm probably going to die trying to hunt down hares. Well, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is look for a location where there is a biome that you can handle that intersects with the mist lands. So as you can see right here, the dark forest biome connects to the mist lands. If you run along the edge of the dark forest biome here, there is a really, 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 really high chance you will find plenty of rabbits because their spawn is very heavy. So here we are over here at the intersection where I was just pointing to. And what we're going to do is just run over here until we get right to the edge where we start getting a misty area. And you can see the mist kind of obscures your vision here and there a little bit, but it's not too bad. And you can just kind of run around the edge here and it should right there's a rabbit. It. You see it right there in the mist. So we could just grab our bow and uh, wait until we got a shot on him. I've lost. There he is. And there you go. That's how easy it is to spot and kill mist hairs. And if you're in the Iron Age, you can very easily find them, kill them and get a meat that is going to give you 60 health and 20 stamina. And just in case you're wondering how good that 60 health and 20 stamina is, it's better than black soup, but not quite as good as serpent stew. So it's somewhere in the middle of those two. And it's a heck of a lot easier to get. So what's really cool about this is that you can be in the Iron Age, eat a mist hair, eat a deer stew, and even something as low as the queen's jam. Now, obviously, if you're in Iron Age, you're probably gonna have carrot soup or something like that, but we're just gonna eat these to give you a general idea of the stats you would have. And if you take a look here, that gives me 143 health and 125 stamina. That's pretty dang good stats for being just at Iron Age. If we swap out the Queen's Jam for something like Carrot Soup, and we take a look at our stats now, our max is 145 and 130. So with just a little bit of searching and spending some time out on the water, you could easily tech jump your food and gain a massive advantage in your Valheim journey. Hopefully you all found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for other awesome some Valheim guides, you can find a link to one of those on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.